Hello there. Welcome back to the well acclaimed series, Lauren Armstrong and the Legacy of Cod. Congratulations for making it this far. You sat through six hours of what some people would consider the greatest story of all time. And I just have to agree with them. Once laid out in full, what we have here is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. A story full of highs and lows, twists and turns, and a story that was completely made up. I mean, it was pretty obvious that it was all fake, right? Emma never wanted to be Lauren's friend. Ramona never wanted to date Lauren. Casey, the real Casey, has never once contacted Lauren. And Debbie, well, Debbie is just Debbie. So now the big question is, how did we get here? How did the troll go on for so long? And when will it end? All right, let's set the scene. It's March of 2016. The Church of Cod is the most active it's ever been. Content creators like Bass Shaman and Nathaniel Trevor are cranking out stuff on the regular. And as we all already know, Ember Inferno decides to make a phone call. Ember starts talking to Lauren as Emma since she didn't want to use her real name. And for the most part, nothing really deviates from the path. Lauren starts to become more involved with the community Nathaniel starts being a jerk, which leads to Ember taking a break from the community and Lorne deciding that the Church of Cod and online interactions in general are all toxic. There isn't really one grand troll yet, but one is definitely being planned out. Whether it was intentional or not, the first lie slash troll was about Nathaniel Trevor. Nathaniel had left the community in December of 2016. He's gone off to do stock trading or something, I don't know. Shut up! But for some reason, Lauren was made to believe that not only is Nathaniel still in the community, but that he's still a massive threat to him. The idea of Nathaniel being this big supervillain, despite his absence from the community, will drastically affect the relationship between Lauren and Ramona. As for Ramona herself, she of course was in on the entire troll. Ember gave Ramona Lauren's phone number in November, and this is when the trolling truly started. Compared to the other relationships in this story, Ramona was a very, very mild troll. You could tell that Ember and her group were trying to test the waters to see what they can actually get away with and what they couldn't. You can't just start out 100% for a troll. It has to be a slow crawl or your locale will leave. Well, for Lauren's case, it was more of a quick jog. Messing with Lauren was very easy, to the point where it became formulaic. All they had to do was mention some guy, spending a lot of time with his girlfriend, and boom, you got some Lauren rage. More characters were brought in to flesh out the story some more. We have the doctor who didn't speak at all to Lauren except for one call that I haven't heard before. The therapist who was voiced by Pope Sam Pendleton who did a pretty good job as Lauren's antagonist. Michelle Simpson, a troll within a troll that worked wonderfully. The lawyer Rick voiced by Crestfallen. And Nathaniel slash Natalie voiced by Mike V who further played into the idea that Nathaniel is still some big villain and a threat. I just texted him back. Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, call him. You, you got another fucking phone, right? Call him. I'm texting him. Hi, honey. Mike, where are you? <laughs> Mike V. Mike V. Are you here? Oh, he's never fucking playing on this shit. I put this on mute. Mike V. Answer and be Hello? Nathaniel, please. Or somebody be Nathaniel, okay? Who's going to do it? Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> All right, Mike V, I'm going to I'm going to put you on. I'm going to take myself off mute. All right? Here we go. Hello? What am I doing? Hello? Mike V, Hello? you're going to be Nathaniel. Who's who's this? This is Nathaniel. The first Ramona call that was ever heard by the public was the Lauren Doctor rage call. It was leaked in March of 2007 and everybody just ate it up. Ember slowly started to release more and more phone calls to the point where there was a new one just about every week or so. She would also often live stream herself calling Lauren on YouTube. 
and if you remember a cop showing up to Lauren's doorstep, that wasn't out of the blue. Someone who was watching a live stream called in to make that report. Hi, um, a friend of mine um, has been acting kind of erratically, kind of almost like threateningly, um, I guess you could say um, somewhat despondent. Um, he's just found out his, uh, his girlfriend's cheating on him. He's been drinking a whole lot. Um, unfortunately, I'm in, I'm in Ashburn, Massachusetts right now and can't go by to check on him. Um, by any chance, would you guys be able to potentially assure me that he's all right and that he, he's at least stable? Good morning. Yes? Can you hear me? Yes, what's going on? Hey, um, I, I can't. <laughs> he's telling me. Oh, wait, calm down, because I can't understand you. That's cool, that's cool, behave. Okay. Yeah. I wish I'm hurt for that. You're gonna talk to you gonna talk to him do an officer. Wait, 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 what? Everyone was just having fun listening to Lorne and seeing where the story would go next. Of course, it couldn't last forever. The pressure that they got from Lorne's probation officers made them believe that the gig was up, so they decide to go big or go home and live stream the breakup call. And uh, the long and short of it is that Lauren has been made aware of uh, some of the uh, Ramona project. Uh, he knows now that some of the stuff has gone out. And uh, basically the only thing that he still believes is real. <laughs> if you can believe this, after everything this man has been through, the only thing he still believes is real is Ramona. So Ramona is about to break his heart by hitting him with a life-size dose of the cold hard truth. And that is what you're all tuning in for. To hear and observe in real time Lauren getting his heart broken. I'm so excited. They told Lauren that everything they did was a troll, and they truly thought that this was the end of the line. However, to everyone's surprise, Lauren started talking to Ramona again. Despite everything that happened in the past nine months, Lauren came back. He even tried to get back with Ramona several times and continued to talk to her until the end of his relationship with Casey. Okay, so Ember learned a lot of things during that last relationship. The most important thing being that Lauren is really stupid. Ember and the group didn't expect Lauren to ever want to talk to them again. You can see this by the way they handle Ramona's breakup. They didn't just break up with each other. They broke up with each other and then told him that it was one big troll. You wouldn't just give away the troll. They really thought that it was the end. It was supposed to be a climactic finale. Lauren now knows that it's all a troll, and he stops talking to them. Except that he doesn't stop talking to them. He still talks to Ramona on the side, and started to talk to Ember again in February. Now that we know Lauren is pretty stupid, we can take the trolling up a notch, because admittedly, the Ramona troll was pretty tame. Other than outliers like the Nathaniel stuff and the sperm baby stuff, it was just a basic relationship. But Lauren came back. That didn't stop him at all, so let's turn up the heat. What if we get Lauren to fall in love with the actress that played Kayla during his sting? And what if her father was some big mafia boss who worked with Lauren's greatest enemies? So now we have a new troll idea. It's just time to put it in effect. Lauren was told by Ember that Casey wanted to talk to him again and he bought it. Now we just need a Cali sounding voice to match the body. Luckily, someone would offer their voice for the greater good, Tiffany Lockhart, and the trolling would begin once again. Well, I was listening to Wine Lover one night, mm -hmm. as I often did, and Ember came into the stream and asked if anybody would have a California sound voice. So um, that was basically it. And, and 
I had no idea that it was going to be about Lauren. Mm -hmm. No idea. Because this is after the the post breakup calls. Yeah, this is right after. The, the, I think uh, at the time, like, uh, Wine Lover was streaming a Ramona call or something. So Yeah, this exactly. Was, this was like right after Ramona. So Tiffany and Lauren started talking in March of 2018. More people were brought into the group to help out, like Wine Lover and Nick. Joey Teacap came in to voice Paul, Casey's evil dad. Chris Fallen voiced Dan, the resident lawyer man and Emma's boyfriend. And Nathaniel just disappears. I guess he's not a threat anymore. And of course, the community loved all of this because it was a stark contrast of what happened before. They all just spent a year listening to a gentle Ramona deal with the unreasonable, so this was very refreshing, and the troll just keeps moving forward. Everyone in the catfishing group was pretty much bounded by the story being told, and the story was mostly told by Ember. Despite being the voice for Casey, that's all Tiffany did, the voice. Texting Lauren as Casey was handled by Ember, and they did it a lot. Because of this, there will be things that would happen via text that Joey nor Tiffany would be aware of when going into a call with Lauren. Um, you know, because I was going along with a story too. I was just a voice. Right. And so whatever anybody wanted me to say, I pretty much did. Well, see, I, that's the thing is I got thrown into that and I was just told like two minutes, hey, can you play a doctor right now? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, hey, yeah, Dr. Wolin. And, <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> And I'm like, trying to be serious. And Lauren's like, it's because of the blowjob, right? You made her give you a blowjob? And I was like, oh, okay. I see what's going on here. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was the same with Paul. It's like, okay, you're going to play the dad. And I said, okay, fine. And it's like, oh, by the way, I'm like, does he have a backstory? Oh, yeah. He bought uh, Casey and her brother. And he trades children on the black market with Chris Hansen. And he's a sex offender. <laughs> This is all just one big improv session and it's done masterfully. Other than the storyline that the group was creating, another restriction placed on them was the fact that Tiffany couldn't always hop on a call with Lorne. Lorne would just keep calling everyone and if he doesn't get an answer, he'll keep ramping it up and getting angrier. The way they got around this problem is by having Casey move between the hospital, rehab, and jail. That way she isn't able to use her phone. The constant movement between these three places would become a good tool to get the gang out of sticky situations. Uh, I sold the display. Yeah, so, okay. But, but Ember would send out a text and saying like, Tiffany is available like tomorrow night at like 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So then it would be like, yeah, okay. Cause you know, we, Tiffany was only available a few hours a week. Right. And and so yeah. that was um, where it went. And I, I think I played like, you know, like, Tiffany had to go into into a hospital because Lauren would call all day long. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think Ember, Ember was doing the text, but Tiffany couldn't have Lauren blowing up her phone, so she had. That's why she kept going to jail or to or the hospital, so she you know had to have her phone restricted. The end of Casey started with an event now called the Cornville Visitor, where a guy went to Lauren's trailer and live streamed the trip. After some drama within the group. Ember decided to trim it up and use this opportunity to do so. She told Lauren that the man who visited him was actually Xavier. Xavier, by the way, never messed with Lauren and is just another fake boogeyman. She gets Lauren to change his number so Lauren can't talk to both Joey or Ramona anymore. As for Casey, Tiffany couldn't voice her for the final month, so Ember took up the plate and decided to voice Casey herself. There was a guy on Facebook that I think reached out to Yahoo Police. Yes, I, re um, I remember this. And all the, you know, the groups that we used to be. Yeah. He's a nice guy. And he lives up in Massachusetts. And he said he was going to be in Maine and he was going to be fairly near Lawrence House and he would take a detour. And he wanted to know like where he lived and stuff. So we had three ideas. And this was, you know, Ember's show. We bring it up to Ember. We can like, you know, tell him nothing. Um, and then hope to get, you know, whatever footage he has, or we can like live stream it, or we can make him a character. Like we thought of maybe saying he was like a photographer from Playgirl. <laughs> right. Some, like pictures Obvious, of Obviously. Right. So no, he doesn't know. So he's going up there and we, you know, he wasn't that good with the, the computer. So she set him up and got him a channel. Or I think she had to use one of her channels because his channel wasn't up long enough. And uh, he streamed his interaction with Lauren. Um, after that call, though, 
what had happened was um, Ember called Lorne and said that the visitor was actually Xavier. <laughs> and he's fucking with Lorne. And Lorne and Lorne went out chasing this guy down all night long, trying to find him. Casey, of course, wasn't meant to last, especially for as long as it did. The concept is funny, but Casey is a real person, so using her name like this isn't really the best idea. So after brainstorming some ideas, Ember just told Lauren that Casey was fake and was actually just a mental patient named Winnie who was tricked to do this by Xavier. So Ember wanted to do some pruning of her group, which was, you know, her true choice, it's her group, but instead of just saying, listen, we're going to move on, she made up an elaborate plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan was that people were fucking with Lauren. So she uh, told Lauren that Casey was, was fake, was, a, was I think, a, a mental patient, um, and to cut ties with, with Paul and with Ramona because they were all in on it. Oh. And then told me and Yap Yap that Ramona... Um, you know, told Lauren the truth and the whole troll's over. Yeah. And then told Ramona that, you know, yep, yep, told Lauren the truth and the whole troll's over. Well, but, uh, uh, like, what? I don't know why, why, because, why did the Casey thing have to end, though? If Because Casey had to be determined fake, and her name was out there now, too. Oh, yeah. right. It Casey wasn't supposed to go famous. on. It wasn't supposed to go on that long. Right, because we were trying to think of ways to kill Casey and then have, like, you know, what would happen next you okay know, Casey was on her way out from a blood infection this ended up working out for the better and killed two birds with one stone they aren't using Casey's name anymore and because Winnie is now voiced by Ember she could talk to Lauren as much as she wants with no restriction this led to the massive production of a ton of phone calls and live streams the amount of Winnie content greatly surpasses the amount of Casey content and the amount of Ramona content I of course didn't cover everything about Winnie, as that would have been crazy and probably fruitless, so I just stuck to the main storyline. But there are a ton of short stories and side plots that mean nothing and go nowhere. New characters like Axel and Jello would get thrown into the woodwork just to be forgotten later on. Darker themes would also be attempted, like the time when Winnie got sexually assaulted and Lauren's reaction to it. This led to Rhoda, who was voiced by Ember, and everything that happened in that situation. Ember was just throwing a lot of stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. Some things did, and some things didn't. Ember and Crestfallen, or Emma and Dan, did also go to visit Lorne, which is kinda interesting. But other than that, there isn't that much to add because everything is routine at this point. Good morning, these are not new. Oh, this is another gift one from us. Hey, this right here is you share that. This is for one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's and, cool. And that one okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll give it to him. Oh, <laughs> I want these couple bags. Okay, you got them now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're welcome. Tiffany comes back and starts to go through some stuff with Lorne, now as Debbie. Now I think it's the best time to talk about multiple voices playing different characters. So most of these calls happened via Skype. There would be multiple people in the Skype call with Lorne and a lot of them would just be on mute while listening. This call would then be transmitted to Maine where the internet sucks, straight to Lorne's cheap phone and then transmit it from Lauren's phone to Lauren's awful Bluetooth earpiece. If you mix this with the fact that Lauren is already bad at hearing, you can get away with a lot of audio trickery. Crowds and airport terminals sound real to Lauren, but are actually just played from YouTube. Multiple people can have the same voice, but Lauren won't notice it and sometimes will even forget about it. Tiffany Lockhart voiced Casey, Debbie, and for a very, very short time, she voiced Winnie. Crestfallen voiced Dan, Rick, and other background characters like TSA officers. 
And of course, the largest collection of voices was that of Embers. She has voiced Emma, Winnie, Rhoda, Matilda, yes, that's her voice, Casey, Victor, and other stereotypical Mexicans like Rafulio. She would also fill in when others were absent. She voiced Dan a couple of times. She voiced Debbie when she was in the hospital. She even voiced Lauren's brother Roy at certain times, and Lauren would be none the wiser. <laughs> Roy, if you don't shut up, your ass is gonna get beat. Well, I, I call Paul. Paul is coming up there right now. I call, I call Paul, and Paul is coming up there right now to set your fucking ass up. Paul is, Paul is, Paul is coming up there to hit you, Roy. Huh? To finish this section off, Listening to Tiffany as Debbie is very interesting to me. She has to criticize the actions that Lauren committed in the past, like the sting and his denial of it, while also addressing his present actions like probation, drinking, and what he did to Rhoda. This huge web has been woven and then tangled, so now it's up to Debbie to help Lauren untangle it. It's like if an outsider had spoken to Lauren, saw everything that was going on, and said, Dude, what are you doing? And that's pretty entertaining. Finally, the law caught up to Lauren and he got arrested in August of 2019. There really isn't much to say here because everything was pretty much laid out. The whole getting an interview with Chris Hansen thing did happen. They did try to do it, but failed. But other than that, there's nothing noteworthy here. Tell us the, the, that very last day, he, uh, he, he's he got this, I got some pain in the ass uh, meeting with Maria. Just yeah. Gonna, just going to be a formality. He believed it was just a formality. He knew that he was in trouble. Mm-hmm. He was going to go meet with Maria. It was just a formality. It was going. Yes. It was going to take a minute. He did some. It, yeah, he believed. He believed that he was going to go in there and sign a paper, like he always did right. whenever he got in trouble, which were actually his modifications to his probation. So they were legal documents that he was agreeing to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Essentially, his sentence. Yeah. He's he's agreeing to that. The only thing that was different from from those other times was that they didn't arrest him. They al it's like getting a ticket. Yeah. You know, you get a ticket. They can take you to jail. Sure. You know, for certain things, but they'll give you a court date and set instead. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, what he's doing is he's agreeing to his modified terms that give him more restrictions. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, okay, okay, okay scribbles his signature and then he's out of there yeah so he believed that that was going to happen again mm -hmm. and it didn't and your very last the very last voicemail that you got from lauren armstrong was him singing ario speedwagon <laughs> yeah he was singing in that voicemail oh gotta go see maria what a joy mm -hmm. and then he he was singing then he sang he, he sang ario speedwagon and then uh, that's that. Yeah, was... he said, I'll call you when I get out. And he didn't call back. That's right. <laughs> so many of you have noticed that there's still a bit of the story left that I haven't discussed. Lauren was only in jail for six months, from September to February. So what happened after he got out? Honestly, I haven't dug into post-jail Lorne yet. I really wanted to focus on what happened before, from Ramona to Debbie, because no one has really laid that out yet. So what I tell you now is just a brief outline of what happened. Lorne was home the same day he was released from jail. He of course isn't allowed to drink anymore, and he goes back to talking to both Emma and Winnie. We also fall back into dumb storyline stuff. Winnie relapses and goes back into doing drugs and partying because Lauren was her reason to keep fighting and since Lauren was gone, she just loses it. She knows that I got locked up because I had friggin' 
I've been told so many times that you know, that phone, that polygraph. And that's what she said. You know, she she ignores the people who know what's best for her. And she's not going to get punished for that like you did. She's going to go out with a blast, she keeps saying. She needs to go to probation and do what she's got to do to get her shit back together. I hope she does. Will's been trying to get her to do that. He drove her last week and told her he was going to um, take her to Chuck E. Cheese. So... When they stopped, and it was by the probation, she jumped out of the car before he even stopped, stopped. Like when they stopped at a stoplight, she jumped out of a car and started screaming and running from what he told me. And that was the last time he saw her since. Debbie slash Tiffany doesn't want to talk to Lauren anymore, and the Winnie ship is long gone. So since Lauren needs to cling on to someone badly, he starts chatting with Jamie Amy. If you don't recall, Jamie, voiced by Wine Lover, is Winnie's cam friend. The first time Lauren and Jamie talked to each other, Lauren was very critical of Jamie's cam business, so it's really odd that Lauren would try to pursue a relationship with her. How does that go, y'all? How many guys you fucked, Jamie? You're 23 years old. Are you jealous, Lauren? Uh, How does that make you look? How does it make you look, Jamie? I I tried being fucking nice to you before. To fucking uh, get you fucking out of this, out of this shit that you get to fuck every fucking guy on in fucking porn, so you can fucking uh, make yourself feel better. Making money, I got all that money. Uh, so yeah. You get all that money, Jamie. You give you fucking money after that fucking money. How do you think you're gonna feel when you have to fucking get married and say, "I'm sorry, honey, that I'm so fucking loose." You can't feel it when you fuck me. That's not your <laughs> giant hurts, you fucking. How are you? How are you really gonna feel, you Jamie? Laughing. You're 23 fucking years old. You're yeah. fucking real. You're like fucking 50. Then, then, yeah, I'm 50. And guess what, Jamie? I look like I'm in my 30s. How are you gonna look when you're 50? Stop and fucking think about it. You're 23, Jamie. Oh my you god. You think that shit's gonna last forever? No, I don't. That shit ain't gonna last forever? Man, I have a business plan, unlike you, going to win it. Uh, a business plan of what? Business plan? What I'm gonna Putting do. your legs? That's not a business plan. I don't think you know how the porn industry works. It's called now. open door policy. What? <laughs> Dad, why do you keep laughing? That was funny. Because you're not old enough to understand, Jamie. Stop (gasps) fucking throwing your body away for fucking money. Lauren starts talking to Jamie in March of 2020 and also starts sending her videos and photos of himself. Jamie still does her cam stuff and Will comes around to help her out with it. Will becomes Lauren's target enemy because Jamie would talk to Will about this cam stuff, but Jamie can't talk to Lauren about it because Lauren doesn't want to hear anything about it. Later down the line, Jamie gets COVID and it gets so bad that she's forced to use a robot voice. Yes, Lauren is talking to somebody with a robot voice. Why would I want this? Why would I want this? All you want to do is stay down there and fuck your goddamn friend. You tell me, bro. You tell me, bro. Why would I want to be with you if you just want to fucking stay down there and fuck your friends? You're being crazy right now and I can't deal with it. Oh, because you can't deal with it, Jamie, because you're the one that's dishing it out. Because you know you're fucking wrong. Incorrect. You can't handle that. You cannot fucking handle that. Incorrect. As for his current whereabouts, no one really knows what Lauren is doing unless someone drops some phone calls. So I just assume that he's up there living his best life in Maine. 